When aeroplanes first took off, so did parachutes as the best form of escape. Today's aerodynamic lightweight chutes enable cargo and people to descend safely and land right on target. Let's drop into the factory to see how they're made. This company makes military parachutes. Each one has a 9-meter wingspan and carries up to 200 kilograms. Making the chute's canopy starts with a rugged woven nylon fabric with nylon ribbing. This light table lets a worker detect any flaws in the fabric. The alignment between the ribbing must be consistent. They test the fabric by pulling the material until it rips. To pass, the fabric must withstand a minimum of 20 kilos of pulling force. A laser cuts out the parachute parts, 30 to 100 of them, depending on the model. A vacuum system stabilizes the fabric by sucking it to the table during cutting. The fabric is usually silver colored to blend in against the daytime sky. A seamstress now sews on nylon tape to attach the parts and reinforce the seams. Some panels have holes about the size of a dinner plate to funnel air between the two layers of the canopy and keep it rigid during flight. Once they finish sewing, workers inspect the stitching. Every two and a half centimeters of stitching must have between seven and ten stitches. If the stitching is too close or too far apart, the fabric could rip. And that's the last thing you want when your chute is descending at a rate of up to four meters per second. So they mark any problem spots with a red ribbon and re-sew them. Here, a worker sews nylon tape to reinforce an area called a flare, which is a triangular patch of nylon reinforced with silicon coating. She loops the tape at one end of the flare's points to later insert what's called a suspension line. The 60 lines link the 60 flares on the canopy to the jumper's harness. To reinforce each flare, she sews 42 zigzag stitches in a two and a half centimeter area. The nylon suspension line arrives on spools, so workers use this machine to stretch it straight. A worker marks off up to four and a half meters per line and cuts it on an angle to reduce fraying. Workers later sew the ends into loops so they can attach each one to the loop on the flares. A worker makes a lark's head knot in each line and ties it to a flare. This type of knot is easy to undo if a line needs replacing. Connecting the 60 lines to the canopy's 60 flares takes about two hours. Only after all these knots are secure can they pack the chute into the backpack and ship it to the customer. The nylon backpack has two identical parachutes, the main chute and a reserve. This worker is sewing the panels that'll encase the reserve chute. Extra stitching reinforces the straps. Strict guidelines must be followed when packing the chute. The ends must be rolled then the rest folded into layers. Before each jump, the lines must be untangled and checked for any tears from the previous jump. The lines and the canopy are inserted into the pack. Pulling on this red handle deploys the main chute. The yellow handle is for the reserve chute. There are straps over the shoulders, chest, belly and legs. Finally, Three buckles attach the harness to the jumper. Good luck.